and welcoming you to the In The Beat TV show at O'Toole's here at Royal Oak. Tracy Cox, our insider, hockey insider, winter classic, alumni game. We have a guest in the studio here. We have a guest, Eddie Mio, who's been a former um, alumni Red Wing hockey player, goalie. He has a lot of insight. Also, too, we have Rob Parker, the insider, talking about what's going on with the Tigers and the Detroit Lions. Earl Curitan in the building to talk about the Detroit Pistons and college basketball. We have an idea about the future of boxing. It's back. We have Jimmy Paul in studio, two generations, Jimmy and Jermaine Paul to talk about boxing. More In The Beat coming up. I can't believe it, we got Eddie Mio out of the ice to practice for this alumni game. I think he literally just got off the ice and just got here about a half hour ago. How are the practices going, Eddie? Well, we actually got off the ice at uh, 1 o'clock, but it took me that long to uh, <laughs> to take the gear off and um, and get situated and get my clothes on. But uh, we're having a lot of fun out there. That's uh, that's what this thing's all about is, is guys getting together again. Some guys we haven't seen in two, three years. Other guys that are still flying in, we haven't seen them in 10, 15 years. You know, got, my ex-teammates are are coming in on the 26th of December, but uh, we got it. It's it's a nice little thing. All the guys are excited. The guys are uh, critiquing themselves, and uh, the goaltenders are getting beat up a lot, Rich. <laughs> I'm telling you, me and uh, me and Ozzy, and uh, that is Chris Osgood, and uh, and Manny Legacy has now uh, started to come out in the ice. So we're having a lot of fun. I'm not stopping any bucks, but <laughs> but you, you know. I, two questions. One, did you ever play in front of 40,000 fans? <laughs> that, to me, is something that is uh, kind of like a stage fright, shall we say? We had a little meeting after the skate today. That They, they were uh, Rob Martino, who, who is in, in charge and heading this, and kind of told us they had 32,000 tickets sold already. So uh -huh. it's, uh, it is going to be that figure of 40,000. And uh, no, I have not. <laughs> Answer to your question, I played in uh, front of... Uh, 21, which was the Joe Lewis New Year's Eve night, but uh, I don't know. I'm in the first game with Kenny Holland. Kenny Holland, the general manager. Uh, Jenny, uh, Kenny and I are gonna split the game. Although Ozzy last uh, last week said he'd like all of us to play 10 minutes in each game. So uh, you know, there's only four goaltenders, so we might need that because I know Kenny and I might not last through the first game. And Eddie, how are the elements going to be, now that you're going to be playing outside, how will that be differently than what you're used to in the past with your NHL career and also playing in a lot of charity games? Will that affect your ability and the other ability of players? No, I don't think for us. I mean, it might be a factor for the big game on New Year's Day, but uh, for us, I think it's more about getting out there, playing against the uh, ex-Maple Leafs that are coming in, guys that we played against when when we were, when we were in the league. I, you know what, if it's cold, that's part of it. Don't worry, we'll have enough underwear on that, uh, you know, and uh, it'll be bad for the goalies though, but once you get moving out there and they're skating and the adrenaline's pumping in, I think it'll be just fine. You had two um, really influential uh, players on uh, Toronto, and I would have to say Ty Domi and and Lanny McDonald, who was a winner of the Stanley Cup in 1989. Um, will they be a force to be reckoned with during the game? Well, Lanny, I like. He scored a few goals against me many, many times. But Ty Domi, when you say a force to reckon with, have you seen him play? In fact, he's trying to get on. Uh, Dougie Gilmore is a good friend of mine, Hall of Famer from Toronto. But uh, Dougie, I saw him in the summer. And uh, he says Ty Domi's trying to get on his, his line and Wendell Clark's line and they refused to play with him. So I don't think he's a force, but it's going to be fun to have him go against Joey Kosher, uh, our enforcer on our side. And let's, let's talk about, you know, the Red Wings specifically, kind of changing subjects here. Um, we're talking about, you know, the Red Wings have been inconsistent in their playing as of late. We have Pavel Datsu that's now, um, as of yesterday, is on, on the lineup, um, scored a goal, which is a positive force for the Red Wings. But then we've got some goalie issues. Um, with Howard. I mean, do you have any advice for, for Howard moving forward um, to get them back in the lineup for potential um, playoff opportunities? Well, it's hard for me to, you know, really pinpoint what's wrong with Jimmy Howard, if there is anything wrong. But if I had to say one thing, I don't think he's in the mental zone that he should be in. Something's uh, not clicking with him. Obviously, if you saw the last goal in the shootout, 
last night. He didn't even move. He looked like me on the ice today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just an issue that I, I – Frankly, I think that Mike Bobcock should just go with Gustafsson just for a while until Jimmy settles down and gets back. And uh, maybe there's some pressure he's feeling with the new contract, feels he has to win. you got to understand there's nine shootouts that Detroit lost, and that, that's nine points that they, they could have had uh, extra. But they're holding their own. They're still right in the thick of things. And, I, I, you know, there, there's nothing really wrong with the, the Red Wings. You just It's a good league out there. It's a good league. They're just they're young. I think they're afraid to make mistakes. And once they get their confidence and go out and play re- recklessly, I think they'll be fine. Franny Mio, Tracy Cox, uh, Rich Corbello here. We'll be back here on the NWB TV show here at O'Toole's in Royal Oak. to be TV show here at O'Toole's in Royal Oak. Yes, Rob Parker in the house. What is the drama with the Tigers? Which is not a lot of drama. I just think there's a scale back, saving money, you know, and I think there's a payroll cut going on, even though Dave Dombrowski, the GM, keeps saying, no, we're not cutting payroll, and every move we see is cutting payroll. When you trade Prince Fielder, who's making $214 million and you don't get an even exchange for him. And then you trade Doug Fister and get uh, basically two bats and three balls, I guess, for him. You look at that and you say, that is absolutely cutting payroll. So the Tigers are going to scale back. Last year they had a $150 million payroll, which was fourth in baseball. And for Detroit, that's a lot of money. And they didn't win the World Series. And the other part of why this is happening, I think, is A, they didn't win the World Series and make that extra cake that you make when you win a World Series. And B, Mike Gillich, who owns the Red Wings and the Tigers, needs money for the new hockey arena that he's going to build downtown. So he probably says to Dave, cut my payroll. I need that money. Because remember, each baseball team owner got an extra $25 million from baseball for their new TV deal. So Mike is taking that $25 million and some more to be able to put to, a side, put to the side to build this new arena. Talk to me about Max Scherzer. You've heard some things. What's going on with him? Max Scherzer, I think everybody thought once they traded Fielder, they were going to use, try to use some of that money to, to keep Scherzer in town. And I think they were hoping Max likes it here and he was going to give Detroit a hometown discount and all that. But uh, Steve, Bo- I mean, uh, Boris yep. is his uh, agent. There's no discounts going on here. And remember, next year there's going to be a great opportunity for him to be the prized free agent out there. And we saw this year Robinson Cano got $240 million, the fourth largest contract in the history of sports. Not even baseball, the history of sports. So if you're Max Scherzer and teams need pitching, I think you're better to go on the free agent market, test your real value before you sign with the Tigers. So he'll probably play 2014 here for 18 or 20 million and then go make even more. I, I like that offer. And speaking of offers, what's happening with the Lions? The Lions are having an offer where Jim Schwartz, is he gonna be here or is he gonna be gone? That's a good question. And I say not gonna be, well, we've seen what's happened with the Lions. They basically got gift wrapped the division. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Uh, Cutler got hurt in Chicago. The division was laying there for the Lions to have. And you know what they've done since then? They've lost three out of four games, including the hapless Tampa at home. So you look at those things and you say, here we go again. It was gift wrapped to you and you're trying to give it back. And now if they don't, um, to me, make the playoffs and win a playoff game, I think you have to look at the coach, Jim Schwartz, and you have to say to yourself, is it time to make a move? And I would make a move, even if they made the playoffs, it's about winning a playoff game, not just getting there. Remember, the Lions have won one playoff game since 1957. It's time, and that goes back to 1991, time for them to win another playoff game. They got a lot of talent, and it shouldn't be that hard to win a playoff game. Tell me about what you're doing now. I'm hearing some things about sporty cuts. Well, we always, you know, I got a barbershop sporty cuts on Seven Mile Road and <laughs> hot dog spot all-star dogs on Seven Mile I've Road. I like some good, good hot dog, 100% beef. Yes, yes. So all that. And, of course, you know, Channel 4, uh, Local 4, WDIV. Yes. Click on Detroit. You can check out some columns there on the website. Yes. 
So all that stuff. And also, too, you have a blog, not a blog, a podcast. That's right. Parker and the Man podcast. Me and my old radio partner, Mark Wilson, we're doing a podcast. Uh, and we do that. It usually comes out every Monday. So you can look that up, parkerandtheman.com, and check out our podcast. That's Rob Parker. I'm Rich Cabello. We're back with Earl Curitan from the Detroit Pistons right after this. Alrighty, we're back here on the In The Beat TV show here at O'Toole's in Royal Oak. And I want to say personally thank you, Greg, our general manager that is here to put this show on. I have Errol Curitan in the building here to talk about the Detroit Pistons. How is the team playing? They're playing great basketball right now. I mean, it's going to take time for the team to come together. A lot of new changes this year. Bringing in John Smith, Brandon Jennings. Drummond in his second year that's been playing great basketball for him right now. So this team is a team that Maurice Cheeks is trying to put together. We also have a new coach this year, and Maurice Cheeks, a guy that I played with in Philadelphia. And he's just trying to figure it out and put all the pieces together this year and see how things are going to turn out. How important was it to see Andre Drummond grow within last year? It was important because you've seen as a player how Andre Drummond focused on the fundamentals of the game. Well, this guy was 19 years old coming in, 6'11", 270 pounds, with a lot of athletic ability. I haven't seen a guy move like him in, in, in many years. This guy can really jump out on the floor. He doesn't look like he's 6'11". He moves like a guy about 6'6", and you can just throw the ball up there anywhere, and he'll go up and get it and throw it through the hoop. So there's a lot of things he's got to learn, and they did a great thing by bringing Rasheed Wallace in. And, uh, you know, and with the Pistons this year, it's just hard because you keep forgetting about people. Chauncey Phillips is back in the building. You know, you, you got so many uh, players now. There's more depth on that team this year. You know, Bynum still back. They signed him back and brought him back in the building. Charlie Villanueva is still around playing. Stucky's still around. I, you know, just keep going on and on. You almost forget about these guys. And you as a player, I want to tell how great Earl Kierden was to help the Detroit Pistons win championships. What was it about you that you bought into Chuck Daly's form of coaching? Well, I was with Chuck for a long time. I started in Philly, and, I, you know, I won my championships with the Philadelphia 76ers. Chuck was actually assistant in Philadelphia when I was there, when I first came into the league. So in 1983, wow. Chuck was the radio guy for us there. We won the championship. And when he came to Detroit and took over the head job here, he brought me into Detroit with him. And that's when the bad boys first started to, to be formed. Uh, you know, John Long, Isaiah Thomas, Terry Tyler, and those guys were here back then. And that was the beginning of something really good. But Vinnie Johnson was also in the building back then. And that was the start of what the bad boys become. That's wonderful. And you know what, Earl, um, I've heard you're doing a lot of great things for the organization, and uh, I want to want to hear what you're doing. Well, you know, I'm, I'm working in community relations. I got a, a big title with the Pistons like now, ambassador of the community right now. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot to live up to. Uh, but, you know, a lot of great things. Our owner is really in the people that's making an impact in the community now. So we go out and we find people that's doing positive things all over the city and in, 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 uh, in Detroit. It's, make things happen and uh, we bring them Monday night we have a, a come together program where we bring people in that's, that's making an impact in the community and we honor them at the palace so it's, it's, it's a lot of great things going on I'm at the palace every night working full time down there uh, see we got to fill the building back up we need those seats filled back up that's again. it Pistons. So com, spreading the word of all the great players that we got around the city and uh, right. pretty much what the title says ambassador right now that, that's <laughs> it the ambassador Eric here now I'm Rich Cabello we're back here with Jimmy Paul and Kronk Boxing right after this. Welcome to In The Beat. I'm Jermaine Paul and we have former lightweight IBF champion Jimmy Paul, and we have Robert Young from Young & Sons. How you doing? I'm Robert Young, and I'm so excited to be here with Jimmy Paul today. He is one of the guys that I looked up to as a kid when I was growing up in Southfield, Michigan, watching the Crown Fighters, and I'm so honored to be here. I have so many questions to ask you, but since we have limited time, I'm going to get to just a couple that really, really uh, hit home with me. Um, knowing that the Kronk family and what the team means to everybody in the Detroit area and what's going on with the resurgence of, of Detroit, 
Uh, I know that you're working with fighters now, and you have a stable of fighters that you're bringing up along the way. What did it, what did you get from the late Emmanuel Stewart, and and working with the amateurs now, and 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 how did that teach you from back then to to, to now train and, and work with the kids today? Well, I learned a lot from Emmanuel because I started as a young kid myself, and I was working with Emmanuel so far as how he groomed guys, how he got them prepared, how he had uh, guys just slowly learn their basic uh, boxing first, and then after that he he pretty he pretty much he pretty much nailed it, and he had, ended up with a big amateur program, a, a big professional program, and became nationwide. So. I watched all the ingredients and everything that he took place and it, it took place, and I feel that I got what it takes. And um, all I got to do is apply it right, and I should be able to come up with some decent results out of it. So, what's interesting to me is coming from Detroit, you had the Pistons and the Lions and the Tigers and the Red Wings, yeah. and then you had the Kronk boxing team. It was a true team. It was the first true boxing team, I think relative to any other boxing uh, community that's out there, the current boxing team in Detroit really holds its own. I think the legacy left. What, what, what does the legacy of that mean to you and how, how you're coming up with your fighters today? Uh, I think uh, the legacy means like all over the world, everybody knew the Kronk organization. When we go to amateur tournaments, guys would be so fearful to even fight one of them. They see that Kronk jersey, they automatically want to run and not even want to take the fight. So uh, I, that let me know that at one point, we had so much power in the ring that people were doing it was was pulling out of fights and all kind of things like that. That uh, it, it, it brought on legacy, you know. And, and next thing you know, we was all over the world. I looked up and I saw Michael Jackson with a crunk jacket on. And I was like, wow. I really? Said, yes, crunk was <laughs> crunk was red hot. And uh, I seen uh, 42 world champions come inside a crunk and leave out a crunk. And uh, I think that's something that nobody have done to this day. I don't even think a guy. There well, was no trainer in boxing that have had maybe five world champions. Can you imagine 42 world champions? That means all day, every day, it takes so long to get in the ring, to box. But at the same time, we're watching another guy boxing. We're picking up so many things to add to our roster. And uh, I think we end up it's coming up with a good team and uh, some good fighters. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Kronk, is, Kronk was a great stable, and we were, we, we were glad to have you on to talk about all your experiences. Uh, and we are right here on In The Beat for Detroit with Jimmy Paul, Robert Young, and Jermaine Paul. about Young and Sons. What do you know? What do we do? Well, I know that Young and Sons is a water restoration company. And? And it deals in fire, water, and wind damage. And? What? what <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hmm. There's a lot of moss oh, involved. Me. I gotta get this off your shirt. This is um, me being dad. Yo, um, so what? what is it that we really do? We... Help people. Exactly. Why am I having my kids finish my sentences for me? It's I don't know. I just got used to it. I'm, I just, I think. Because we yes. care, right? We care. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing about what we do at Young and Sons. We care. I got in this business to help people. Uh, we're 24-7. We're like the emergency room for your property. So if there's ever any 